In the head-to-head -head videos, there are two different patients with two different diseases that look a lot alike radiologically. You have to see if you can make the diagnoses on the two patients. Both of these patients have a bright T2 ovoid mass within the parotid gland. These look very much alike on these T2-weighted sequences, but even here you can start to see some differentiating features that might help you make a specific diagnosis. But I'll show you some more images of each of them. Patient 1 has a heterogeneous enhancement pattern with ill-defined enhancement centrally. On these sequential images, you can really see the relationship of the lesion to the stylomastoid foramen. You can see the lesion start to knuckle in here, and here it is completely filling the stylomastoid foramen, and now you can see its effect on the vertical segment of the facial nerve. This is a steady state free procession sequence in a coronal oblique view. And again, you can see the relationship of the mass to the stylomastoid foramen and vertical segment of the facial nerve. Now on to patient two. The enhancement pattern is again heterogeneous, but it's heterogeneous in a different way where there are large cystic areas and a peripheral rim of enhancement. You can see the relationship of this mass to the skull base and to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay, I've given you all the information you need. Here's the part where you pause the video and see if you can come up with the two diagnoses for these two patients. All right, I said that the first clue is visible even on these initial images, and here's that first clue. A knuckle of disease headed up into the stylomastoid foramen. We can see the progression of this tumor up into the stylomastoid foramen and up along the vertical segment of the facial nerve. If this isn't convincing enough, hopefully this image is, you can see the mass extending up and widening the vertical segment of the fallopian canal. Now there's a couple of things that can crawl up the facial nerve like this. Maybe this is perineural spread from a malignancy, or maybe this is a tumor of the nerve itself, like a schwannoma. But this is a very benign enhancement pattern. It is ill-defined central enhancement. It's not a thick rind of peripheral enhancement like you'd expect from necrosis in a malignancy. This has a benign uh, pattern characteristic of a schwannoma. For patient two, the lesion is nowhere near the skull base. It's nowhere near the stylomastoid foramen. That's really the critical differentiating feature. Now, this mass in patient two with heterogeneous T2 and heterogeneous enhancement, this could represent a lymph node or a primary malignancy of the parotid gland, but statistically, it's most likely to be a pleomorphic adenoma, especially since the T2 signal is extremely bright. It's even brighter than the CSF. That makes pleomorphic adenoma very, very likely. So, Patient number one is a schwannoma of the facial nerve. Patient number two is a pleomorphic adenoma of the parotid 